Hi, my name is Matt Quill, Senior Strategic Business Development Manager with F5. Today we're going to talk about Ansible Automation and Ansible Collections. Shortly we'll be showing you a video of how F5 can be used with Ansible Collections to help you automate your F5 application delivery controllers. The F5 Big IP and Nginx portfolio allow for adaptive application availability and security. F5 has worked with Ansible in building collections that allow for our users to fully automate network uh, application availability and application security. F5 has worked tirelessly with Red Hat Ansible to build certified collections that address almost any application delivery controller configuration, day zero, day one, and day two type scenario from provisioning Big IP all the way up to providing advanced application services and security policies. Automation of application delivery controllers, uh, especially the F5 application delivery controllers, often causes a certain level of heartburn within the organization. One, you need consistent change control. Two, you need a reliable configuration management and repeatable policies to implement in your environment. Ansible automation helps to ease the problems of automation in the network layer. We've worked with Ansible extensively to make sure that repeatable automation playbooks are developed uh, across the board for any day zero, day one, or day two type scenario, whether it's actual provisioning of the big IP itself, all the way up to making slight changes to load balancing policies, WAF application uh, firewall policies, or other types of policies in the F5 product portfolio. Coming out next, you're going to see a demo of F5 using Ansible Automation in action. In this demonstration, we are going to look at how to use Ansible to automate the F5 Big IP platform. Some of the components that we are going to use in this demonstration is GitHub as a source control for your playbooks, Red Hat Ansible Tower to execute the playbooks. Those playbooks are going to be written using the F5 Big IP Ansible modules and collections to perform use cases such as deploying an application, which consists of deploying your virtual servers, pools, nodes on your Big IP, more of day one operations, and we will also look at day two operations such as enabling or di and disabling different nodes or pool members that are deployed on your F5 Big IP. Now let's look at how we can install collections. There are different ways. Here we have logged into the Red Hat Automation Hub to download the supported and certified F5 Ansible collections. Once we have the tarball downloaded, we are going to upload this tarball to an Ansible control node. Once the tarball is on the Ansible control node, using a command Ansible Galaxy collection install and the name of the collection is how we are going to install the collection. Once the collection is installed, make sure to edit your ansible.cfg file to point to the correct path of where your collection is installed if not using the default ansible.cfg file. Now let's take a look at the topology that we are going to use. So here we are going to be using a F5 virtual edition, which is front ending an application that is hosted on these Linux hosts, node one and node two. We're going to look at a few playbooks. The first one, which is going to gather some system information or facts from the F5 virtual edition. The second playbook, which is going to install that application or that virtual IP to front end the nodes. And the third use case will be around operational activities performed on the application, which is basically your node one and node two and look how we can achieve at enabling and disabling those nodes. Now let's switch gears to the Ansible control node and take a look at the inventory host file that we are going to use for the playbooks. Now we have different groups to indicate that we have a load balancer and we have the web group as defined in the inventory host file. 
Each one of this defines the IP addresses as well as different variables or different values that we are going to need for each of these groups. So we have one load balancer defined in group LB and two web servers defined in group web. Now let's take a look at one of the playbooks. And as you can see here, the playbook it executed against the host F5 and it is using the collections f5networks.f5 underscore modules. The task here is really simple. We are using a module that's called as the big IP device info to gather a subset of information using the credentials that are provided in the inventory host file and displaying all of the system information only from the big IP. We are also looking at not only displaying the system information, but specific information from the big IP, such as the MAC address and the version of the big IP that we are using. Now let's execute this playbook in the verbose mode. The verbose mod is going to give a lot more information than just the output of the playbook. We'll go through the output a bit later. Let's scroll up to make sure that we are in fact using the collections. So we're going to zoom in to the output and see that this particular module is in fact being used from the collections itself. Now we're going to go back and execute this playbook without the verbose mode so that we can have a look at the output a bit more clearly. And once we scroll up, as you can see, here we are displaying all the facts from the big IP, but only the system facts. So using this module, you can have, you can choose to display different facts. They could be facts about virtual servers or pools, etc. Here it's system level information, so it's information about your hardware, your version, uh, your MAC address, etc. And these two particular tasks from the above, we are displaying only the MAC and the version that's of interest to us. Now let's switch gears to Ansible Tower. The remaining use cases and playbooks we'll execute through Ansible Tower. So let's have a look at the project that's been defined on Ansible Tower. Here, as I mentioned, we are using Git as your source control manager and the SEM URL is defined in the projects. Let's also take a look at the credentials that will be used by the playbook. Here, we're gonna use big IP credential and it is of credential type network. So make sure when you're defining uh, your credentials in Ansible Tower for Big IP, it is of type network. Let's also take a look at the inventory. This is similar to the inventory file that we saw on CLI, and it has been pulled up into the Ansible Tower. So as you can see, we have the group web, which has different hosts, node one and node two, and they have been imported from the CLI. If you click on node one, you will see the IP addresses and other variables that are part of this particular node as well. Let's look at the template that we have on Ansible Tower. There are two templates we are going to be working with. Let's look at the create application job template first. Here is where we are deploying the application. We are using the inventory project and credentials that we just spoke about and we are getting our playbook from the source control manager. Let's launch this particular create application playbook. And here we see Ansible Tower executing all the tasks that are present as part of your playbook, which is to create nodes, pools, pool members, as well as your virtual server. Now let's switch gear to Big IP and see what got installed. If we look at the network map, it gives an overall view of the components or the objects that got installed on the big IP. Let's look at each individual component. We have a virtual server with the name of VIP. We have a pool with the name of HTTP underscore pool, which consists of two members, 
node 1 and node 2 with their corresponding IP addresses and ports. Now, let's take a look at the playbook that got executed to create the application. We are running the playbook against the host LB, and we are also using the collections fi networks.fi underscore modules. In the task section, we are defining the IP and the port of the big IP, but not the credentials. The credentials are being taken from the Ansible tower itself. As we go below in the task section, we are creating nodes, pool, pool members, and virtual servers. Now for the nodes, we are getting the nodes again from the inventory using the group web. Then we are creating the pool with the name of HTTP pool. We are defining a load balancing method as well as the monitors that we want on the pool. Then we are adding the pool members to that particular pool, which is listening on port 80. And finally, we are adding a virtual server, which has a name of VIP with a destination IP address as well as port and other information like profiles, SNAT information, etc. Now, as you can see, each of the module is of the name big IP underscore the object. And this makes it very clear on what is being configured on the big IP. So this is the playbook that we used for this particular job template. Let's go back to Ansible Tower and execute our second playbook or second job template, which is called the Enable Disable Pool Member. It uses the same inventory project and credentials, but a different playbook. And there's also a survey as part of this template. So let's execute the job template and see what we get in the survey. Now in the survey, we can specify the pool name. We can specify the pool member that's present in the pool and we can specify an action. So here we are specifying that we want to disable all the pool members that are part of the pool HTTP underscore pool. Now let's go ahead and launch this job template. And once we launch the job template, it is going to execute the playbook through Ansible Tower. Now all of the task execution will be viewable from Tower itself. And here you will see it queries a few big IP facts, it displays the pool members, and then it performs the action. There is a task that gets executed and some of the tasks that are skipped. So here we are executing disable all pool members. Let's look at the big IP and see what got executed. So we are already at the screen of the pool members and let's refresh. And here we see that the status has changed from green to black for both of the pool members. Let's also execute another combination using the same job template. So we go back to the templates and launch it again. So here we specify the pool name as HTTP underscore pool again. And let's define a particular pool member. So that would be node one listening on port 80. And let's define the action of enable. Once we click on next and launch the job template, the playbook will be executed again. And here the task that was not executed before will be executed and a different set of tasks will be skipped over. So here we are enabling just a specific pool member. If we go back to the big IP and refresh, now we see our node 180 is back to our green status. So to summarize, F5 and Ansible can be used in different solution life cycle. You can use Ansible to automate F5 in your planning or design phase. You can do it in your build or test environment where you need to perform day zero operations. You can do it during your production or in your production environments for your day two operations. You can use automation to monitor and manage, upgrade the F5 Big IP. So the key takeaway is really, it is very simple to get started to automate your F5 using Ansible. And there are different use cases and solution life cycle within which you can use automation. Thank you for your time. Now that you're an expert in Ansible and F5 technologies, I want you to understand 
Automation is complex, costly, and time-consuming when not done right. Using Ansible in combination with F5 and all the qualification work we have done together allows this process to be very simple. Ansible is the leading automation tool on the market today, and F5 is proud of our partnership with Ansible and the deep integrations we've jointly developed with Ansible. To get in contact with us, please visit our website at f5.com forward slash Ansible to learn all about the Ansible relationship. You may also reach out to us directly via sales at f5.com.